Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a vampire film, Queen of the Damned. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Mr. Vampire, who has been hibernating for 100 years, waking up from the sound of a heavy metal band nearby. He pushes away the lid of his stone coffin and comes out. He follows the loud sound source and gets his first blood on the way. This is his first meal after 100 years of rest. Mr. Vampire feels invigorated after drinking the blood from that bystander. It is time to find where that sound is coming from. Mr. Vampire barges into the place where the band is practicing and starts singing. The band members question who he is, as he has a very unique voice and uncanny appearance. Without hesitation, Mr. Vampire introduces himself. The band members refuse to believe it as it sounds absurd. But Mr. Vampire transports from one area to another to prove what he's capable of doing. That is enough to convince everyone that he means business. He then becomes the vocalist of the band. It did not take long for the band to become so popular. While on tour in London, Mr. Vampire is being interviewed via a giant screen, which is being asked why he is coming out in the open, when vamps are known to be secretive. Mr. Vampire explains that he's hiding for centuries and that it is time to share himself with the world. A reporter also wants to know why the band is only scheduled to do one concert. Mr. Vampire tells the reporter that he does not want to do something repetitively. When being asked if other vamps will get mad for his lyrics that seem to reveal vampire secrets, Mr. Vampire answers that he knows that they will be. He also challenges the other vamps to come out. There is no fear in Mr. Vampire's eyes. Mr. Vampire's assistant brings two girls to one of his places in West England. When asked why vamps need to move from one place to another, the assistant begins to explain the reason, but is taken aback after Mr. Vampire appears behind him out of nowhere to prevent him from sharing his secret. Once the assistant leaves and the girls are alone with him, the girls think that they will have a good time with the vampire superstar. They begin to flirt vampiric hormones out of him, without knowing what will happen next. Instead of doing a smelly workout with them, Mr. Vampire climbs up the wall all the way to the ceiling before dropping down to them and killing them both. On the other hand, a researcher hears a voice from her dream calling for her. She has heard the same voice since she was six. She is raised in a family of witches. The researcher wakes up, prepares a cup of coffee, and begins to study. She can see from the news the launching of the new music single of Mr. Vampire. The words of this song captivate her ear. At the Center for Paranormal Studies in London, a secret organization that researches and investigates the supernatural, the researcher shares with her colleagues how the lyrics caught her attention. The lyrics mention the Admiral's Arm, an old bar in London that is known for black magic and people disappearing for good. She believes that the location is a vampire's coven. That's the only sensible explanation, after all the mysterious disappearances in the area. The researcher then shows them an actual photo of the pub that she took herself. The superior general finds out what the researcher did and invites her to his office. She needs to know that it is not safe to be out there. The superior general grabs several old paintings that show the same person present in every piece of art. The man in the painting is named Marius, and he was the one who created Mr. Vampire, the lord of the great manor. The superior general adds that he has Mr. Vampire's journal and promises to let her see it as long as she will not return back to the coven. She swears to never return. The researcher begins to read Mr. Vampire's story, starting from the time that he was brought to an island by Marius, the vampire who turned him into one of them. He woke up confused and not certain where he was at. He moved out of the bed to find out what was going on, despite being too weak to walk. When Marius came in, the man warned him that his family would send an army to look for him. Sensing danger, the man tried to run away from Marius, but Marius flew towards him and bit his neck with ease. Marius told him not to worry despite being bitten, as only his body would die. Marius then forces him to drink his blood. Moments later, the man demanded more blood, indicating that he's then made into a vampire. Marius lets him drink blood directly from a person on the shore. Marius warned Mr. Vampire not to drink the last drop of blood from his prey, as that's a recipe for disaster. Doing so would make them feel the insatiable desire to drink more. While walking on the seashore, Mr. Vampire questions the need to hide. He believes that with his power, there's no need to hide, but rather be out in the open fearlessly. Mr. Vampire sees a beautiful girl playing her violin. She gracefully plays with passion in her eyes. He fell in love with her that instant. But Marius reminds him that he cannot introduce himself to the woman unless he's willing to kill her. Besides, they are vulnerable during the day. It's not worth getting to know her. Marius also adds that they must keep the secret to themselves to protect their kind. He emphasizes that in order to be a vampire, their kind must be dead to the world. 
As defiant as he is, Mr. Vampire grabs a violin and starts playing beautifully to impress the young woman. The beautiful girl's male companion sees Mr. Vampire's red eyes and warns her to run for her life before he is killed by Marius. The woman tries to run, but she is caught and killed by Mr. Vampire. Both victims are then set on fire. This incident begins to haunt Mr. Vampire. He pledges to never partake of the simple joys of the world again. While engrossed in playing violin, Mr. Vampire's bow gets thrown out across the room as someone yanks it out of his hand. Upon recovering it, he sees a small mouth connected to a secret door. He enters and discovers another world within. There, Mr. Vampire sees the Queen's statue with her cane. He offers to play some music for the Queen. He then begins to play the violin until she starts to move. The Queen offers her arm to Mr. Vampire to feed him. Mr. Vampire passes out after drinking as much as he could. Marius ties Mr. Vampire up after knowing what he has just done. He drank the purest blood from the Queen, and with his aggression and immaturity, Marius could only imagine what he could do. When Mr. Vampire wakes up, he begs for more blood. He cannot get enough of the Queen's blood. Marius tells Mr. Vampire that she is Marius' mother, the Queen of the Damned. Marius explains that the Queen and the King used to rule over Egypt, but their insatiable desire for blood became their eventual downfall. Eventually, the King lost his desire to drink human blood. Later on, the Queen lost hers as well, and both became living statues. Mr. Vampire wakes up and finds out that Marius has abandoned him. They will not see each other for 200 years. Back to the present time, the researcher returns to the Admiral's arm, without the Superior General's knowledge. She pretends to be a party goer to get a glimpse of what's going on inside. Once inside, all her suspicions are proven to be correct. It is a haven for vampires indeed. These vamps are so secretive that visitors remain oblivious that they are moments away from being killed and will never be seen again. One male vamp approaches the researcher, who's curious about her presence, as she does not look like the rest of the visitors. The other vamps join in as they are suspicious of her as well. They only start to believe her when she brings up Marius' name. What they did not know is that she got the 200-year-old vamp's name from the journal that the superior general showed her. That was a close call, and she needs to find the nearest exit as soon as possible. Her life is now in danger. The researcher immediately goes out of the club. More vamps follow her outside and surround her. One vamp is on the verge of biting her neck, when suddenly Mr. Vampire comes to the rescue. Mr. Vampire tells her to be more careful. The researcher then begins to share what she knows about him, including the lyrics of the song about the girl on the violin. Mr. Vampire figures out that she grabbed hold of his journal for her to know of his story. There's no other way for someone to know his past. The researcher tells him that she knows something about him that's not in the journal. She then tells Mr. Vampire that he still keeps the girl's violin. That turns out to be true. Mr. Vampire fell in love with that girl, but he needs to kill her or all the vamps will be in danger. While in Los Angeles preparing for a huge concert, Mr. Vampire can sense that something is coming. He can't figure it out yet, but he's certain that something is up. Moments later, he is able to sense that someone is nearby. As it turns out, he is visited by Marius. This is the first time that they meet after 200 long years. Mr. Vampire was left alone back then, after discovering the statues of the Queen and the King, and after feeding on her blood. Marius reminds him that Mr. Vampire almost cost him everything. Because of Marius' arrogance, he wants Mr. Vampire to cancel the concert. The Queen is awakened due to his music and taken the King's blood to absorb his power. Mr. Vampire is in danger, as well as the people around him. The Queen enters the Admiral's arm and feeds on a helpless vamp by ripping his heart out. She wants to let them know who the Queen is. Other vamps try to come at her, but they have no match for her power. She's not the only one looking for Mr. Vampire at this point. Other vamps are also eager to kill him. The Queen burns all the vamps in the Admiral's arm. On the other hand, the researcher sneaks into Mr. Vampire's place with another girl, pretending to be an escort. Once the girl is sent out, the researcher hands over Mr. Vampire's journal back to him. In return, she dares Mr. Vampire to show her what it's like to be a vamp. He is hesitant at first, but the researcher is able to convince him. Mr. Vampire asks her to close her eyes. But instead of biting her neck, he takes the researcher outside. He admits that her humanity and imperfections make her so attractive to him. Marius warns him about it. The researcher expresses her desire to be with him by offering her blood. Mr. Vampire refuses to give in. He shows her how they feed on innocent people by killing them for their blood. Mr. Vampire shows her the hard way to talk her out of it. The researcher is too innocent to be a vamp killing random people for blood. At the concert, thousands of fans cannot get enough of Mr. Vampire. 
Without their knowledge, several vamps are also among them, waiting for an opportunity to strike and get rid of Mr. Vampire, who is putting their kind in danger for being out in the open. The Superior General is also present in the concert, and Marius greets him. Shortly afterward, vamps start their assault by flying toward the stage one at a time. Mr. Vampire manages to kill one of them, using a microphone stand. Marius also appears on the stage to protect Mr. Vampire. The battle is on. The Queen makes an explosive appearance on the stage. She summons Mr. Vampire and takes him away to a private but hormone-smelly place. She expresses her feelings toward him and her desire to make him her hormone consort after killing the king. She also reminds him that she's been saving him from harm without his knowledge. The queen is his protector now. The two then play a vampiric hormone gang like there's no tomorrow. When Mr. Vampire wakes up the next day, he's surprised he is able to go out in the open. The queen tells him that drinking her blood allows him to do just that. The Queen tells Mr. Vampire that they have a score to settle. It's time to confront the other vamps who are defiant of her. Meanwhile, the Researcher is with Marius, and also with Maharet, a vamp and a distant ancestor of the Researcher, and some other vamps who need to find a way to eliminate the Queen. They are plotting together to take revenge and kill the Queen by finding her vulnerability. When she is giving blood, someone needs to suck the blood up to the last drop. Mr. Vampire is their only chance to make this happen, but he seems to be the Queen's ally at this point. What they don't know is Mr. Vampire is just holding back and waiting for the chance to take her out. The Queen introduces Mr. Vampire as her new king. She invites everyone to join her, but they all refuse to as she does not have regard for human life. The Queen has no sense of morality or compassion for humans. She asks Mr. Vampire if he really loves her in front of everyone. Mr. Vampire says yes. The Queen then demands he kill the researcher to prove that he really loves the Queen. This does not terrify the researcher at all, as she wants this to happen as well. Mr. Vampire begins to suck the virgin blood out of the researcher until she passes out. In return for this romantic gesture, the queen offers her diabetic blood to him. Mr. Vampire then begins to suck, but she notices that he intends to drink all of her blood. She pushes him away. Mr. Vampires then attack the queen altogether with the other vamps and suck her blood, but she remains powerful and strong. Mr. Vampire finds a vulnerable spot on her neck and starts sucking her blood in diabetics. Maharet stops Mr. Vampire from sucking all her blood. Instead, she bites the queen herself. The queen's body then starts to harden like a stone until it dissipates into thin air. Maharet then turns into a statue. The researcher visits the superior general back at his office. She looks completely different now after being turned into a vamp. She seems to be at peace with her decision to be one of them. She then introduces Mr. Vampire to the Superior General. Mr. Vampire gives back his journal to the Superior General. He asks what it is like to become a vamp. The researcher is willing to show him how it feels, but he changes his mind. The researcher then bids goodbye to the Superior General. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.